Hello, welcome back to some more Hearthstone reveals, more Perils in Paradise cards, and this time we're dealing with Death Knight, uh, which is quite nice how they've, you know, uh, put all these sequentially. Uh, just before I get into this though, breaking news! I, I'm not doing the right thing, I was trying to do BBC News, but that's more like a... a duh. Duh. Okay, whatever. The breaking news is anomalies are back in the game. Uh, they were hated before. The Hearthstone team doesn't think they're going to be hated the second time, so good luck with that Hearthstone team. Uh, if you enjoyed the anomalies before, which were meant to have small effects that made every game feel very slightly different, uh, well, now's your time to play, because they are in the game right now as I speak. Uh, just, you know, perusing social media before it, I didn't see many happy people, so uh, we'll see. I do kind of understand the the qualms about this. I'm personally not a fan of the anomalies, unless the card itself dictates that the anomaly becomes a a thing. Uh, I just don't like them just being as a basing in the game. But whatever. I don't know how long they're going to be here for. A couple of weeks, maybe till the new set. Enjoy. Uh, anyway, back to business with the Death Knight reveals. We have seen the cards from Death Knight. We have seen Buttons and Corpsicle. Buttons, which was the Shaman Tourist, uh, drew you spell schools. Corpsicle seemed to want you to generate lots of corpses to then pew pew your opponent's face with uh, ice lollies. We also saw last time from Warlock. Warlock, their Tourist is Death Knight, and we know that Warlock has this Death Rattle synergy. And we kind of speculated that uh, Death Knight would also have a Death Rattle package. It does have one. Uh, also, we do know that, as I've said, Death Knight goes into Shaman. And actually, kind of nicely, we've seen some Shaman cards as well. We have seen this Spell School synergy from Shaman as well. So, when you look at these cards, bear in mind that they could both go into a, a Warlock deck. They could be in a Death Knight deck. Or they could be into a Death Knight-Shaman hybrid, as per usual. Anyway, let's first and foremost start with the Death Rattle package for Death Knight. We have Eliza Goreblade, the new legendary undead pirate. 4 mana 4, 3 with a single blood, single frost rune requirement. Death Rattle, for the rest of the game, your minions have plus 1 attack. It's like Mograine again! Death Knight has had this type of effect before, a for the rest of the game effect. Most classes have to be fair, like most quests end up in this end, uh, rest of the game effect. Uh, Mograine did 3 damage to the opponent's face every single turn. Eliza instead doesn't give you the 3 damage immediately up front however you could potentially get more than that if you fill your boards full of tokeny minions and they all get this plus one additional attack so it's really threatening especially if in your in a a zoo tokeny uh, deck now obviously this has a death rattle so you could put this into your warlock package you could play this with summoner dark marrow for eight mana you play dark marrow you play eliza goreblade eliza goreblade dies and suddenly you get plus two attack instead for the rest of the game. Do I think that is good? No, I think it's actually pretty bad. I don't think this would be a good use for the the Warlock Taurus. You may still go into that deck, because I think the plus one attack on its own might be good enough, mainly because of stuff like Nerubian Egg that I think will get into that deck. Giving your Egg plus one attack for the rest of the game, and never having to worry about that, is actually a pretty nice upside. So maybe you just slot one of these Eliza Goreblades into your Death Rattle Warlock deck, just to help the eggs along, and actually just your other minions in general. They're just the three plus one attack. I'd probably have valued that as like a, a half mana type effect, but on every single card, soon adds up, especially if you've got a minion based deck. Obviously, in the Death Knight package, they already have their own Death Rattle package. They also like Bone Shredder. Potentially, you could use Bone Shredder to get another version of the Eliza Goblin Death Rattle. Uh, you trigger it and gain that effect on the Bone Shredder. So when the Bone Shredder dies, you potentially get up to like plus three attack. Similarly, you could use Yelling Lo Yodeler to trigger this effect two times, again, getting you plus three attack. I actually think that all this is a bit of a pipe dream, not just because Eliza, you know, is a single one use card and it's a legendary, so it's going to be hard to get this combo off, even though it's only a two card combo. I think it's just a little bit too slow. I think you're more likely just to put this into your like more aggressively based sticky death rattle deck and eliza's just in here to help you along so i think it will make the cut of that deck but this idea of you know potentially killing it so many times set up some combo with a charge minion to kill your opponent's face i just don't think will be a a thing uh there are some advantages obviously getting tons of attack as well in death knight they have got this hand buff type package eliza is kind of like a hand buff minion i mean it's just a buff everything uh, cards so it works quite nice with stuff like you know the dark thorn quilter and the the spiders as well uh but again 
I'm not sure this would get into the hand buff deck either. There's a pretty tight list on hand buff. Uh, so yeah, I just don't think this is quite good enough for that. That being said, when you go back through the past parts of Hearthstone for effects that gain stats, so to speak, we've had recently the Stone Rite. This gave plus two attack to all your totems. Now, it started better than Eliza. Four mana five four is better than four mana four three. Quick maths. It gave plus one attack additional. Now, here are the like the comparisons, the things that are slightly different on the card. Totems is obviously a very finite pool. However, it was in Shaman where, you know, that is where the totems exist. Other thing is that Stone Rite was Battle Cry. Eliza is Death Rattle, so the Stone Rite's effect went off faster. You're more guaranteed to get that effect. There is a world where Eliza, you play the minion, you can't trigger the Death Rattle, and your opponent silences it, and you just don't get the effect. And basically, you've played a 4 mana 4 3, which is pretty maddening. Now, on the flip side, it has got some tribes, so there are ways to discover it via the undead cards or pirate cards. Uh, so I think it is around, though, a Stone Rite quality, because one of the nice things this has over Stone Rite is Death Knight has a token package, so to speak. Whereas Shaman didn't have exactly this perfect totem token package. Now, I will say when Totem Shaman was really good fairly recently, they actually, the reason it became very strong was there was more of this token-like package, so you could swarm the board with totems. And actually, on a positive side thing for Eliza, this package was around like a tier 2 deck, but you'd be, you know, if you're going to be mean to it, you'd say it was high tier 3. But it was a pretty solid deck, so I actually think this Eliza aggressive minion based deck might be pretty good also worth noting that totems only have zero attack some exceptions uh so you kind of need this additional attack from the stone right for them to actually be useful most minions in death knight especially if you're tokens don't have zero attack they have some form of attack so i think they're actually pretty comparable cards uh similarly for other things for rest of games effect we had dark pharaoh to khan that turned your lackeys, which were 1-1s, one, into 4-4. Four, four. So you got plus 3, plus 3, but it was, again, to a very finite pool. Eliza is a much wider pool, so I think it's kind of fair enough that the effect is less than both the Stone Rite and Takan. Takan also costs one more mana. Uh, and actually, just in general, you know, we've experienced this recently. Most cards that say for the rest of game, something happens, are normally pretty good. Do I think this is as good as Bran? No, but it's one of those things that... It's going to be hard to refuse it, I think. And as I've alluded to before, I think this is going to be really powerful, though, on token generating cards like Mining Casualties. They're not things to be hand-buffed. You can't hand-buff them. They are spells. However, Eliza will hit them. So you will suddenly be generating two two ones instead that generate two two ones, which are the frail ghouls that can charge. So you're suddenly getting a lot more bang for your buck. Uh, this card is shown in yellow. It's a new card. We'll talk about it in a moment. Ghoul's Knight, that summons you five 1-1 one, one tokens that attack random enemies. With Gore Blade, just one use of it, it's five 2-1s. That's 10 damage for four mana. That's pretty good, right? Uh, so I can see a world where Eliza Gore Blade sees some play. We also have some further Death Rattle support. Brittle Bone Buccaneer, another undead pilot. It's a 2-mana 1-4. Whenever you play a Death Rattle minion, give it Reborn. Uh, okay, this is quite nice. Just on the base of it, 2 mana you're expecting 2-3, aka 5 stats. And you've got 5 stats on the Brittle Bone Buccaneer, but you probably want this to have an ability to, in some matchups, play it a turn early, and then play on turn 3 for tempo, your Death Rattle minion in the turn afterwards, rather than waiting to, you know, like, turn 3 and get a 1 mana Death Rattle off. And it's starting nicely for that. It being a 1-4 means it's fairly likely to live on turn 2. There are some decks that can kill that on turn 2, but... Uh, definitely some that can't, and that's going to be a nice skill check. I really like, I really like that card. You know, any card where it's statted in such a way that fits its effect, very nice. And I think this fits the the bill. Uh, giving minion reborn, we saw this way back in the past. I think this was selfies of all doom, right? Embalming ritual. Uh, that was a one mana given minion reborn. More recently, we've seen it in undying allies, which was after you played an undead. This turn, you give it reborn. I think Brittle Bone Buccaneer is pretty close to a 2 mana 2 3 being bundled in with Undying Allies. Undying Allies was a more finite pool, aka Undead, than Embalming Ritual, which could just hit everything, hence the 1 mana addition to that card. I will say, normally when you combine cards together, they get better. There is a slight exception to that rule. If you have a zero mana card, sometimes it makes it worse because zero mana cards can be abused in other ways. I will say, I think Priest is one of the classes that can abuse zero cost cards. Currently, less than some of the other classes. There are some exceptions. Uh, 
in fact, even now there are some pretty big exceptions if they could generate enough zero cost cards. Uh, but yeah, in the recent history, we had Undying Allies, which is a pretty good card. Put out a effectively a normal static two drop card. I think you've got a pretty decent minion. Uh, obviously, this is pretty nice with something like Eliza. You might want to play this on turn six. You know, two mana Brittlebone into Eliza. You're probably going to get the Death Rattle off twice because you've got Reborn. Obviously, you're really susceptible to Silence at that point, and maybe this became such a really strong, strong thing. More decks would run their Silence cards if they had them. For example, Rogue has access to them. You're always susceptible as well to getting uh, Renoed. That being said, this is going to come up four turns earlier now than Reno, so you have a bit of protection from the old Reno that way. Uh, that being said, Eliza is also susceptible to being bounced back in this effect. You lose the Reborn on that turn. And basically waste four mana for your opponent so there are some counterplay to this i think more reasonably again you're going to see this in this aggressive tempo death rattle package and if you can hit something like a nerubian egg you'd be thrilled with that result especially if you can then give it the card as well that gives it, you know the plus one attack aka the eliza and suddenly you have a one two with reborn that generates four fours that's really scary that's really sticky your opponent is going to have a bad time it's going to be so hard to trade it out yeah, that's going to be really good. Even things like Chuffle and Balrin, I was thinking about this. With that, and if you, again, you tempo this out, you play your 2-mana 1-4, the next turn you play the, the Baron, it's kind of like 4-3 in stat lines, because Reborn is like your attack plus 1 health, if you kind of treat it that way. Obviously, it's not quite fair to treat it that way, it's two distinct minions, but it's kind of like then you're generating a 3-mana 4-3 that generates you 3 cards, that's really, really good. So I can see a world that Baron makes this deck as well. And you use the Buccaneer just to give you sometimes some just big draw to draw into some of all your other Death Rattle cards and basically just be a refill. Now, obviously this has a nice synergy with Summoner Dark Marrow. If you can play Summoner Dark Marrow onto the board with Brittlebone Buccaneer, whenever you play one of your Death Rattle minions, it will die, trigger its Death Rattle twice, but it will have got reborn, so it will come back as the the one health variant of it, but won't trigger Summoner Dark Marrow again because it wasn't played that time, it was summoned. So it basically keeps the stats on the board, so to speak. You lose all but one health. Uh, and there's some real mean potential, again, if you go into the Warlock package, where you put your Roborus onto a minion in your hand, you play the minion from your hand, you have Brittlebone Buccaneer on the field, and you give that minion reborn. So it dies twice, it generates you two Auroboruses, uh, and then the two Robbers is going to minions in your hand, and you know, you could repeat the combo that way. Uh, potential meme a ridge there, but I still think I'd prefer to play this in a more aggressive variant of this Death Rattle package. And I think when you're looking at this Auroboros infinite combo type thing, I know it's not quite infinite, but you get tons of Auroboroses basically. Uh, I don't think that is going to be good enough. I think that's going to be a bit too slow, and some decks, aka Reno decks, will just be able to deal with that, and uh, you'll cry. Also, in Death Rattle package, we have another cheap card. And this is actually what I think the Warlock package, and actually this Death Knight deck, was kind of screaming for another cheap, good Death Rattle minion. I think this fits the bill. Dreadhound Handler. It's another Undead Pirate. <laughs> two mana, two, two. It has a Rush, Death Rattle, summon a 1-1 one, one Dreadhound with Reborn. And the Dreadhound is an Undead Beast with, as it says, Reborn. And it's 1-1. One, one. Uh, yeah, this is a really good, cheap minion kind of hand wavy you can kind of see this as a two mana four four right you get the two two from the dreadhound handle you get the the one one twice because when you reborn a one one it becomes back as a one one so it's kind of like four four it's very very slow of course because you have to not only trigger the death rattle on the handler but you have to trigger the death on the reborn minion to get it back that being said and i've said this before death rattle one of the reasons why death rattle doesn't see a lot of play in current uh, standard is death rattle is slow compared to battle cry however if you give death rattle rush then it's a lot better like you can trigger the death rattle on the turn you played the minion and it comes kind of like a pseudo battle cry uh, so you could sort of see this as you know two mana deal two damage generate a one one reborn which is okay it's it's pretty okay but then again you go back into the synergies with then death rattles if you can play like on coin turn one brittlebone buccaneer it's probably living on turn one right against most classes and on two you play this dreadhound handler suddenly you've got a two two rusher with reborn that generates on a death rattle a one one with reborn and that is a lot of stats and a very sticky minion as well to deal with on turn two i think that is a really really solid solid play 
Again, if you get a laser off at some point as well before you play this, off the one ones with reborn come out as two ones. This is then a rushing three two uh, minion. And if you can combine this with the Buccaneer as well, you've actually got a better version of Restless Mummy. And Restless Mummy was the surprise thing from Saviors of Uldun, I think. Uh, this card was pretty efficient. Now, the times have changed since then. Four mana deals six damage, plus up as two threes. Probably not good enough anymore, but it's sort of been a play in some decks. Not all of them, of course, but it was a very solid, solid card. Like, devastating in the arena. Uh, and I kind of see this Dread Hound Handle as a similar type of thing. It probably needs a little bit of additional setup to get, like, insane value but as a base form it's pretty okay uh yeah then we have some more token support we've alluded to this before by the way i love the put of this card and i love the art of this card chef kiss 10 out of 10 for design i love it four mana single undead rune card ghoul's knight and it's a bunch of you know ghouls having a pillow fight i i adore it great art uh whoever did the art Pat on the back. Good. Good card. Anyway, the card effect is summon 511 ghouls that attack random enemies. Uh, this is very similar to crop rotation, and crop rotation sees play in a lot of the Death Knight decks. Basically, anything that can put an undead rune in their deck, which I think is basically all the good Death Knight decks right now. Uh, they run crop rotation. Four one ones that you can rush out for three. Generates you four corpses. Now, with crop rotation, you can choose where those minions go. Ghouls Knight for one more mana, you get one more minion. However, you don't get to target where they attack. Now, there is an advantage to this because it says enemies, not minions. Some of them can go to the face. And the other nice thing about them is that, unlike crop rotation, the ghouls don't die. So if one goes to the face and, you know, the four other ones go to minions, you might still have a 1-1 one, one minion at the end of the, the play. And you're still getting the five corpses eventually. Uh, this is also very powerful, similar with crop rotation, to be honest with you, with Eliza. If you can give this plus one attack and you're running out 10 damage, that is actually pretty threatening. And it also has this nice synergy with Sickly Grime Walk because the ghouls are undead as well. For eight mana, you generate five one ones with Poisonous. They go off attacking enemies. I don't want to do the, the probability of this, but if your opponent has like three minions on board, I think the odds are you kill the three minions on your opponent's board. You keep two minions as well on like crop rotation, where they'll die eventually. And you can trade those Poisonous minions into uh, future uh, minions your opponent plays. So, and you get the damage onto the face. Pretty nice. I... Don't know exactly where this will see play. I think it could go into a Death Rattle Death Knight package. I'm not sure it'll go into the Warlock Death Knight package. I'll get into that in a moment. I certainly think it has a place that maybe gets into the Climatic Necrotic Explosion deck, aka Rainbow Death Knight. I've not played this deck recently. The only reason I think Ghoul's Knight might not see any play in that deck is not because I think the card is bad. I just think, does it cut out crop rotation or mining casualties? I actually think Mining Casualty is better than Ghoul's Knight, and I think Crop Rotation is also slightly better than Ghoul's Knight. Do you want to run a 5th and 6th copy of something like these two cards? I'm actually not certain you do want to for that deck. But maybe you'll mix and match a bit. Maybe you'll run two Mining Casualties, one Crop Rotation, one Ghoul's Knight. You know, maybe you'll, you will run two Mining, two Crop, one Ghoul's Knight. I don't know. I haven't got enough experience in that deck. Either way, I think it's a very solid card for the, uh, the package. Also worth noting, we, we talked about this before, Corpse Skull, the Death Knight card, loves you generating tons of corpses. Ghoul's Knight, very good at generating corpses for you. That's five corpses for your Corpse Skull. You hit it to the opponent's face for three damage. You spend three corpses, it comes back to your hand for the end of the turn. Next turn, you do another three damage. And you sort of like, it's a Mograin effect, but you're playing two mana for it each turn. So a bit more expensive than a, a typical Mograin. But I definitely can see this being a finisher as a an aggressive token deck so this is kind of where i put ghouls knight is on its own i'm not sure it'll make the death rattle list i'm not actually sure it'll make the rainbow list but maybe there is some sort of undead aggro deck out there that will try to run this maybe it's like double green single blue to get advantage of both corpse skull and the aggressive tokens there is a world as well we have to bear in mind warlock could run these warlock does like cheap minions to sacrifice Maybe you play the Taurus to put your Ghoul's Knight into your Warlock deck so that you can destroy one of the, the five minions that inevitably goes face. You get three cards on it. Or as a bit of, you know, a bit of an insurance cost to it. If you don't get your minions attacking your opponent's uh, minions as you like them, you can destroy one of the 1-1s one with Chaotic Consumption to kill an enemy minion. Personally, I think there are better ways for Warlock to do that within their own class. So I don't think they'll use Ghoul's Knight in the, the Warlock deck either. 
Uh, this is the card that was just released or revealed, sorry, moments before I started recording. And actually, I don't know what is going to happen with this. Uh, it's a new location for Death Knight. It's called Horizon's Edge. Four mana, five durability locations. You get five use of this bad boy. Deal three damage randomly split amongst all enemies. After a friendly minion dies, reopen it. Okay. Death Knight, very good at killing minions. And I think this is the combo, right? You play Horizon's Edge on one turn. On a future turn, you play your crop rotation. All in all, it's seven mana to deal 15 damage randomly split amongst all enemies. That's basically an Astalor effect, right? Now, unlike Astalor Tier 3, which was a... I think it was eventually a 10 mana card, right? Oh my god, I can't remember what Astalor ended up being. At one point, it was eight. I can't remember if it ended as an eight mana as the final piece. But either way, you don't get the stats of the minion. But you're getting like a mana or two off the uh, the final form. And I think that's a pretty solid combo. I will say, I don't know if the Death Rattle deck kills minions or its own minions fast enough for you to run Horizon's Edge in that package. Again, this might be a token undead deck, but they will certainly love this card, uh, if that's the case. And obviously, as well, it works quite nicely with Ghoul's Knight as well. Now, it's not quite as good as Crop Rotation, because obviously on the Crop Rotation, you can send the minion one after another, and then just keep pushing the button of the Horizon's Edge. With Ghoul's Knight, you're pushing Horizon's Edge. You play Ghoul's Knight, all five go off and do something at the same time. It refreshes Horizon's Edge, but you only get to use it one more time. But again, I think you're going to put both of these token -y generating aggressive cards uh, into that package. It kind of reminds me of Jungle Gym for Hunter, if all has been said and good. Uh, Jungle Gym is two mana cheaper, though, but hasn't quite got the same burst damage output as Horizon's Edge by the fact it can't refresh itself. So, yeah, watch the space on this card. I think this will go into... A deck that we're not really seeing currently yet. Or we will see, if you know what I mean. I don't think it's going to go into the Death Rattle or the other package we're about to reveal for Death Knight. I think it'll be its own thing, which is like this aggro undead uh, variant. All right. I think it's worth pausing for a moment and going through the packages. Because there is a Warlock Death Rattle package. And I think there's a Death Knight Death Rattle package. And I think they'll both be two uh, succinct and distinct decks. So in a Dark Marrow and Party Planner Vona. I think this is a good enough package together. You maybe play your Death Rattle cards, your more aggressive tempo ones early. You might have a bit of the pain package in this deck as well to give you a Roborus. And eventually a Roborus and a bunch of minions in your hand will grind your opponent down. So you're going to be putting like the Felfire Bonfire. You're going to be putting your Party Fiend in your, that deck. Sacrificial Imp I think is a really good Death Rattle. It's a shame Death Knight won't have access to this without being the Warlock class to start with. That's obviously going into that deck. And as I said, the Pain Package with the Imprisoned Horrors probably making that list i think as well you're going to have the eggs you're probably going to put greedy partner in there you've got a few two mana cards and you really want to be coining out the Fellfire into your summoner to potentially get this turn of 16 16 stat line i think we worked out it as uh the advantage of this then is you get to run some of the the perils in paradise death knight cards i think you'd put the dreadhound handler into this deck as well a nice early tempo death rattle card your brittle bone buccaneer the potential as well to go off with the aerobrus to generate tons of card i think is very good also potentially having brittle bone on the board with your summoner so that you still retain some of the stats of the death rattle meaning you play after that i think it's actually it will happen sometimes and then again you can put something like ghoul's knight into this deck as well to generate you some more corpses for so maybe using a corpse skull or just because you want more benefit from eliza as well I, I can see all of this being its own package i think this is going to be a bit of a slower deck than the death knight variant of it but has the potential to get some insanely high 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 rolls which i don't think the death knight death rattle deck will have but i think the death knight death rattle deck might have a a a more consistent outcome Anyway, let's go through their list. I think you'll be running Egg in that package. Handler, the Buccaneer, the Eliza. You're probably running Corpse Skull. I think you'd be running in both lists, to be completely honest with you. But then the advantage of the Death Knight deck is you can use some of the old Death Knight package cards in there, which Warlock can't do because it can only Taurus to the Paradise cards. So you're going to get to use stuff like Crop Rotation. You're going to get to use Mining Casualties. Death Growl, I don't really talked about. I think it's a bit of a, a more meme card. Uh, but I can definitely see a world where you copy like the Nerubian eggs onto your crop rotation and you start sending them in. And that is a really scary thing. And currently people do do that in the, the Death Rattle Death Knight deck right now without the additional support. You can also use something like Mosh Pit, which is kind of why I don't think they'll use a new location. 
Spend three corpses to give a minion reborn. Very powerful in your death rattle deck, right? Uh, you're probably going to see Baron as well in for a redraw. I think you're going to be running red, blue, green. It's going to be a rainbow deck, so rainbow seamstress can get into that deck. Again, you can use stuff like Yelling Yodel from the past. And I actually think there's a potential world where the win condition of this deck, instead of having a Roborus, you use Climatic Necrotic Explosion. You play all your aggro tokeny cards. You keep generating sticky board after sticky board, sticky board. Your opponent, like, maybe stabilizes around eight or nine. And then just suddenly, bam, Climatic Necrotic Explosion on the board. You spend a few corpses as well for some of the other cards from the rainbow package. And that's really, really frightening. So I think this is going to be a more consistent one, the Death Knight deck. But there's going to be some really high rolly uh, situations with the Warlock one. And I'd like to see how these two end up comparing to one another. I'll probably try and build one of each for the first opening uh, day of the set. And I'll play the one with the more of the new cards in it, which actually might be the Warlock package. Anyway, that's not the only package Death Knight has got. Uh, unexpectedly, they have a Freeze package. We have two mana, double Frost Rune, Frost Spell, Slippery Slope, Freeze a character, draw a card for each Frozen character. Obviously... This is incredibly Frostburn's Fury, and actually one of the first Death Knight decks that was really, really powerful, and was probably, I think most people would say was a tier 1 deck at the time, was Frost Death Knight. The potential just to do insane damage to your opponent's face. I think originally this was a 5 mana card, right? It blows my mind. You could do 5 damage to the face, you'd freeze all of your opponent's boards, you'd play another Frostworm Fury, freeze your entire opponent's board, you would also be generating the 5-5s five in this, which would then attack. And then eventually you would have the 10-10 attack afterwards. And it was really, really oppressive to play against. Hence why they stopped printing cards to do with Frozen in Death Knight. And the package slowly, like, waned away. Uh, now we have Slippery Slope, though. So if you Frostwind's Fury, your opponent's big board, you freeze their face afterwards because their face will always not be frozen and Slippery Slope can freeze the face. Uh, so when you're drawing maybe, like, four cards for two mana and freezing your opponent's face, that's really good value. Especially if you're this deck that wants to machine gun out some cheap spells, maybe to finish off your opponent. You play a bunch of cards, play them all into your opponent's face, keep them under pressure, freeze their board so they can't respond to your board state, and then suddenly refill your hand with a slippery slope. I really like this card. I think it has the potential to resurrect a package that I didn't think was coming back. Also worth noting, there are other freeze methods in uh, Death Knight. Might of Menethil did see some play, I think, in that Frost package. I think it was just as it was dying off, though, right? Uh, that has the ability to freeze three minions on your opponent's board. That's pretty nice with Slippery Slope, right? You freeze three minions, you freeze the face of something or another minion on the board after that, and then you draw four cards for six mana. That's really good. Uh, also works with Quartzite Crush, which I think is one of the more oppressive weapons that's ever been printed in Hearthstone. I don't think they will ever see play in the same deck, though, like, normally, because I really think you're going to be running this in Triple Frost Rune. Thereby, you will not put a Blood Frost Rune weapon in that deck. But maybe there is some way to generate the Quartzite Crusher via other Discover cards in Death Knight, which they have tons of, uh, and then maybe you will sometimes selectively take the Crusher. Also worth note, uh, noting, rambunctious stuff that's seeing basically zero play right now because the Frost package doesn't exist. With these additional Frost cards, maybe sees play now. Like, this isn't a bad minion in my opinion. It just lacked some cheap Frost support. Maybe we're hitting the critical mass with the Slippery Slope. I don't know. Anyway, it's also finally worth mentioning. I think this is the, the final dream of what this draw spell school package was for Buttons. Sorry as well, I went through puberty while saying that. Buttons is a Shaman Taurus. Now, Shaman very recently had the Nature Shaman package, which machine gunned your opponent's down face with spells. Wouldn't the Frost package in Death Knight love to machine gun your opponent's face down with spells? And I actually think this is why Malted Magma is statted the way it is, and why it's a two mana card and not a one mana card. I think it's because of fear of what it would happen with the Frost package. Potentially, you know, you play your Frost Worms Fjord. There's ways of discounting as well with the Cabaret Headliner from the Shaman package. Also, there are ways to mana cheat with that Frost package as well from Death Knight. Maybe you play your Fury, your Slippery Slope. You draw a bunch of cards. You draw into Malted Magma. The Malted Magma then, like, you know, ticks over the, the top of that. We don't know if there's going to be spell damage either added with the Shaman package. That's normally something that they do have... I expect them to not put it any in the tourist side of things, but who knows? Uh, but yeah, I, I really think this could be a threatening deck. So we're going to have to see what Shaman has in terms of direct to the face spells. Namely nature ones from this set, because obviously you're going to want to draw the frost spell from the Death Knight class. You're going to want to get Frostworm's Fury of Buttons. 
Malted Magma, currently the best option, because we've only seen one spell currently. That will go to the face as well. If they have a nature or a shadow spell, for example, because I think the Frost deck didn't run any shadow spells, that go to the face. Buttons could just be your engine to draw you a bunch of cards to machine gun your opponent down. So watch this space, basically. We have to see the Shaman package, and we're going to see that tomorrow. Uh, by the way, this isn't the only insane card they've got. Snow Shredder. Four mana single frost rune minion. Four four undead. Costs one if a character is frozen. Wow, this is broken. <laughs> I'm telling you now this card is going to be nerfed. Wow. Why do I think this card is going to be nerfed? Well, let's say you're going turn two. And you're probably going to put Glacial Shard in your freeze death knight deck. Hmm. How... How obnoxious is it going to be if you Glacial Shard your opponent's face or a minion? You coin your Snow Shredder, and on turn one, you have six fives of stats. And frozen your opponent's face or something. That's going to be really oppressive. Uh, and he mentioned about this Frost deck, that the reach of the deck, like, slowly over the nerfs, got weaker and weaker and weaker, up to the point where the deck wasn't viable anymore. If you can minion down your opponent's face for like 20 damage it's probably not gonna be 20 from this but even if it's like 15 that might actually be reasonable for some decks they're just not gonna be able to deal with this for a few turns you take 15 additional damage from the snow shredder that suddenly brings that reach down for the burst damage of the spells way way closer so i think this could be a thing and actually currently right now we're seeing this combo druid deck being a thing that has a good mixture between spell damage spells to the face with the swipes and some good minions I'm kind of seeing this package evolve before our eyes that has a very similar aspect to it, but more obnoxious because you're going to be freezing your opponent, which means they're going to have less answers to what you're doing. So again, watch this space. Uh, finally, we have Frostbitten Freebooter. I nearly included this in the middle because it is a Death Rattle card, but I don't think it'll go into the Death Rattle package. Anyway, it's a three mana single Frost Rune card. It's another Undead Pirate, what's new? Two mana, two, three mana, two, two, sorry. Death Rattle, freeze three random enemies. Any that were already frozen, take five damage instead. Uh, obviously, very nice with the Slippery Slope is another way to freeze lots of characters to end up in a draw state. Now, there's a bit of an anti-synergy with this because in a way, you would like to Slippery Slope first so you get the five damage off the Freebooter. But maybe that's a skill check. I think more often than not, you'll want the additional card than the five damage. Uh, but... You know, there are some situations where you'll want the reverse. For example, because it says enemies, if you freeze your opponent's face and you hit them with a freebooter, that's a free five damage to the face. That's not insignificant, right? So I think the order on this will depend on whether or not you're trying to kill your opponent quickly or you'll want to refill, which is actually quite fun for a card. Either way, if you freeze three random enemies and you actually hit the three random enemies... And there's a fourth one for Slippery Slope. It's going to be something like the 5-mana 2-2 two, two, draw 4. It is unfortunate that it's a Death Rattle, not a Battle Cry, because, again, this is going to be slower. It allows your opponent to silence it, to bounce it, to do other things to this card, steal it even. Obviously, as well, this works with some of the Death Rattle enablers. I don't think you'll ever use Dead Air with this, because that requires an Undead Rune. Uh, similarly, Brittle Bone Buccaneer and the Death Rattle package we saw before. Again, they have undead runes on them, and I think you're going to want to run this in triple frost decks. Uh, so, again, you're probably not going to be able to abuse this Death Rattle package with this Death Rattle card. Now, there is a card out there, though, that could be used with this, and actually in the frost package. You might want to put a prosthetic hand on this boy. It's an undead card, so the prosthetic hand will magnetize to the undead, and it gives it reborn, so you sort of play into that Death Rattle a bit more. You trade with your Frostbitten Freebooter with the Prosthetic Hand. Ideally, it dies. Freezes three random enemies. Maybe you even, like, ping it with one of your own spells afterwards to, you know, do three more Frost. That maybe do five damage to each of the board. I think there's a lot of variance in this card. Uh, I do think it's on the weaker end of the cards in this set, though. But I, I'm not entirely certain yet. We'll have to, We'll have to see with it, as I said potentially freezing your opponent's face and then killing this card could be some sort of win condition like machine gunning them down with frostbite type things uh watch this space basically i think this frost death knight package may have come from nowhere we were, we were all waiting for this death rattle package and then just suddenly from nowhere the frost package is going to sneak up behind them and maybe better than both the warlock package and the death knight package anyway that is the death knights all done now Tomorrow is Shaman, and I'm really intrigued to see what we'll get from Shaman to see what will supplement this Frost package. Anyway, thanks for watching, I'll see you again next time. Bye!